Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we're going to finish out post-metal week, and uh, yeah, this one we've actually had on the channel before. It is the ocean, and I enjoyed them, I think, last time. Uh, we have requests coming in from Santiago Poyol, Ryan Pattison, Christopher Rojas, Mark Deccan, Liam, Mofathi, Juho Suomi, and The Heat 306. And, uh, yeah, we've had, uh, a couple of requests, but specifically it was for, uh, Jurassic Cretaceous. Now, I mean, kind of technically these requests were specifically for the drum cam week. But we're not doing the drum cam week, and I want to focus in on the music, so we're not actually going to check out the drum cam of this one. Maybe we'll do that as a bonus video, if that's what people want. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to check out the, uh, the original video track. So, let's get into this one. repetitious I guess that's what I should be expecting from this week's stuff I do enjoy the melody line in the brass though got some stick clicks in there I love the time signature in this track. I think it's something like 9-4. It lines up with 4-4 often, but there's always a small little hiccup every once in a while.
All right, so yeah, I'm starting to see uh, some patterns taking shape here with regard to time signature and uh, looping and layering. Lots of drum move or lots of drum movement in that section. So the jump feels like it's playing in uh, 8, like 6-8. Mostly because of the symbols. I really like that cymbal sound. I don't know what's different about it compared to other cymbals you normally hear. But it's, it has a darker tone to it. It's not as bright as, you know, typical cymbals. love the way this drummer feels like accents what he chooses to put accents on I have no idea if this is an inspiration, but I'm getting a lot of uh, Darren Baranowski's work right here. That name doesn't sound right. <laughs> Something like that, though. Drummer's just tearing it up this whole area. Yeah, certainly.
Yeah. All right. Another section. I like those symbol uh, accents going on back there. They fill up the space. So there's a lot of silence, but they don't take up a lot of space, which is really important to keep the screamer front and center there. Anybody getting some tool vibes with those really fast notes with strict accentuation on them? Where the whole band was in on the accent, including the singer? I'm going to be honest, I really thought the song was going to end several times before that. <laughs> there were some really good stopping points in there. Alright, so. Yeah, I, uh... Is this post-rock? I feel like that's a loaded question. I feel like anytime you ask, is this really insert genre? I feel like that's just a loaded question. You can't answer any of that. These genres are so strict, rigid, but also like ethereal. <laughs> they don't really have much structure to them, despite being, you know, 10 bajillion rules about what is and is not this, this genre. But also, <laughs> sometimes bands are and sometimes bands aren't <laughs> simultaneously. Um, but yeah. So to me, though, this is sort of uh like progressive post metal it i hear the elements like i hear the droning 
uh, we went through a long phase of the same kind of riff started from the beginning, probably uh, like two or three minutes, utilizing that first riff. I hear the droning, I hear the repetition, but the song also has a lot of movement, a lot of variety, a lot of harmony and layers. Um, it's like Isis plus Tool. Does that make sense to anybody else? It makes sense to me for some reason. Like, I hear a lot of Isis in here, at least what we listened to the other day. And also a little bit of Tool. I don't know. Let's let's uh let's let's get with this band though. Let's talk about this band specifically. Um or at least this song specifically, I should say. There's really two main ideas that I see in here. The first is going to be the droning and repetition. We see the same three or four conceptual ideas, uh, which would be like the sound of a section like I in a traditional song the verse and the chorus are two separate conceptual ideas you can you know the verse sounds this way the chorus sounds this way and if somebody you know if a band played the chorus but put different words over it you'd still hear it. you'd be like yeah that's the chorus with different with different lyrics right you can understand you can hear that that's that's this specific section so that's what i'm talking about here there's maybe three four five tops uh specific sections here for the most part though uh you know for a what was that like 13 to 14 minute song uh you know that's a very long time to use a very small vocabulary of music uh, especially when uh, these concepts are more or less a single repeated riff on guitar and bass and, uh, you know, a drum lick, and then usually a repetitious pattern or vocal pattern, uh, yeah, like a rhythmic pattern or a vocal pattern uh, in the vocals. I am not conveying this. A rhythmic pattern or a melodic pattern in the vocals. Uh, so they're kind of singing a riff, it's just the words that are changing. Um, and when they when he screams, it kind of loses a bit of its melodic pattern since it's more of just a sound and it really focuses on the rhythmics of it. But again, you're going to find a pattern in that. Um, so like I said, it's a very long song to use such a limited vocabulary on, but they do it in such smart ways, much like, uh, well, I guess I'm going to bring these guys back up again because they just seem to hit all the right notes here. Godspeed you, Black Emperor. I spoke a lot about that band pertaining to how they utilize, they basically create themes, bring them back, and put them into different contexts to recontextualize those musical ideas and basically utilize theme and variation in, in their music. And a lot of that's happening here as well. We might only have a few unique ideas for each instrument, but it's the way that those ideas are being contextualized against the other parts of the song. Uh, the main guitar rift shows up, rift, the main guitar riff shows up frequently in this song. Sometimes the chord progression is played uh, uh, let's see, less aggressively. Sometimes it's played with distortion, uh, but it pops up everywhere. And yeah, it's mostly about the context because it can be played differently. Like I said, we can play it uh, clean or just, you know, less overdriven. We can play it distorted. We can play it with a sparse drum track. We can play it with, you know, a, a loud, rambunctious drum part. Uh, we can play it with clean vocals. We can play it with scream vocals. And it's just basically taking these core concepts. They've they've written out, you know, four or five riffs for each instrument. And they just change the way that they are played with each other. And it really helps that they have a lot of instruments. We have, uh, you know, the clean vocals. We have the scream vocals. We have 
the uh, drums, we have guitar and bass, maybe a second guitar, I don't know, um, I don't know, there could have been, uh, there's brass, <laughs> um, I'm, trying to, I, I'm pretty sure there was something else, but I cannot remember what it was, uh, I almost want to say it was like a, um, a synth sound, but I, I could be, I mean, it was a long song, <laughs> I'm trying to remember all the elements here, um, but yeah, so they have all these different voices that they can pull from, and when they all have their own, you know, three or four different ideas, then they have a lot of pieces to stack up and create different uh, concepts, like like a sandwich. You have bread, you have cheese, you have meat, uh, you know, condiments, mustard, mayo, and stuff like that. You can make a lot of different types of sandwiches depending on how you layer this stuff, and that's really what's going on here. Um, However, they do keep me on my toes because where I thought we were ending, they came in with some brand new stuff. Like some of it, some of it was older concepts, but a lot of it was just brand new, uh, you know, brand new rhythms, brand new melodic ideas, just, but still building on, they were still taking the core concepts and embellishing them or or changing them up just a tiny little bit to give them more oomph or a little bit more decoration on them uh, so that they're not just the same thing they've had. That's the variation part of theme and variation. Theme is just using older ideas with new context. Variation is putting embellishment, a little bit of ornamentation in the theme so that it's still, you know, 70% the same, but now you've got, you know, a little lick at the end or a note you used to hold out. Now it's, you know... It used to be one quarter note, now it's two eighth notes. It has a rhythmic change to it. Minor differences that change sort of the, it doesn't change the identity, but it changes the sound of the theme. Uh, and we just see a ton of that going on here. And like I said, that is kind of what I understand post metal to be. It's the droning and it's, you know, the creation of theme and little variations on it. Uh, you know, we can see that even in Russian circles where they were not really putting much variety in what they played or how they, pl or yeah, what they played, specifically the notes that they chose. But there was a lot of variety in how that sound was created. You know, they're playing the same notes on their guitar, but their amp and their stomp boxes and, uh, you know, the dials that they've got, the end sound is, it changes. So that's their variation, is the sound itself rather than the, the melodic line. Um, this band, though, the sound doesn't change very often throughout, but we hear a lot of variation in the, in the, you know, the notes that are actually written. So yeah, really cool stuff, but like I said, there's still a lot in here that changes. Uh, there's still a lot of variety going on. And like I said, the ending just felt completely new compared to the rest. Where I thought the song was going to stop, we ended up getting like the hardest breakdown of the track. Um, so yeah, it it seems a little bit post post metal. Uh, I don't know, is that a thing? <laughs> uh, I don't know how these naming genres naming conventions work, um, but it does seem to be an evolution of post metal. Kind of taking the core concepts of, you know, the droning and the repetition and bringing it back to some traditional compositional techniques, which I would just kind of seem cyclical. We took, we got rid of the compositional techniques to bring in the droning. Now we're bringing them back, but we're also focusing on droning. And it's just really cool to see how these genres can evolve over time. I would never put this band in the same category as Russian Circles or Celeste, uh, they are, you know, I'd, I'd put them with Isis, but I would not put them with Neurosis. Um, so, yeah. Cool stuff, though. Like, I really dug this. But again, like I said, I don't really think it's post-metal. I would not classify it as post-metal. Um, but, yeah. It held my attention, which is good. Like I said, there was some there was some repetition, there was some droning, but there was enough there to really keep me engaged and not wander into that that empty mind meditative state, which I get. That's the point of post metal. 
to an extent, I guess. I don't know how the artists feel about that. I don't know if that is their intention to make music to, you know, uh, you know, turn your brain off to. But I get that a lot of viewers go into it as background music or as music to kind of clear their head and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know where that divides rests as far as viewers and artists, but or listeners and artists. But uh, yeah, like I said, I understand that that's kind of why people listen to this genre. But since that's not really why I listen to music, I, I really appreciate that this didn't uh, fall into those trappings, not trappings, but fall into that style of writing where it drones on for so long that it becomes sort of a meditative trance kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so I dug that. I would not mind seeing a drum cam of that. Like I said, maybe we'll do a bonus video of that. Um, the drummer made it seem really effortless for the most part. There were a few little, um, little flourishes in there that I was like, yeah, you know, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see what he did with that. Um, but for the most part, it sounded effortless. It sounded not simple, but not overly complex. Not anything I would have to see to understand. But again, you know, I've, as I've said before, I'm paying attention to a lot of different things all at the same time. And trying to visualize what one instrument is doing is just going to shut me out from the rest of the, you know, the rest of the instruments going on. So not exactly great for what we're doing here. So it's very possible that I missed some of the more, uh, like, maybe nuanced complexity. Something that I would definitely see in, in a drum cam. So like I said, maybe we'll get a, a bonus fit of that one. All right, so that's where you guys come in. Though. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Cretaceous, Jura I think I got the backwards, Jurassic Cretaceous by the Ocean. And uh, where you guys kind of put this on the genre line the genre spectrum is, is spectrum is this uh is this post rock or maybe the ocean has done post rock and this is not post rock maybe i picked the wrong song but the right band uh you know that happens from time to time that's that's just that's something inevitable me going in blind i can't always uh you know make sure everything lines up perfectly but yeah while you're down there in the comments you can also like subscribe ring the bell all three of those buttons are right above the comment section and there's also a description box nearby with links to all sorts of stuff like block videos and uh, the re the request spreadsheet you can also get a link to the patreon where you can join up and join the discord community and there's a link to the special selection which is through paypal we'll be doing a couple of those tomorrow you basically get to tell me what you want me to listen to, and I do it. So far, no exceptions. I've done, I think, 30, almost 40, almost 40 minutes was the longest one we've done so far. So, that does not that does not mean <laughs> to give me the longest song you got. <laughs> I'm just saying, so far, we haven't had any exceptions, even though we've done some really long tracks. So, all right. I will be back tomorrow with some special selections. As I said, I'm going to aim for two. Two is my bare minimum, but if I've got time, I'm gonna go for three. And uh, also Sunday, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to get some done as well. Really want to uh, get through these lists. Uh, the regular special selection is over. It's just about to a hundred. And uh, the premium, I think, is at eight. So yeah, want to, want to, I want, I don't want to burn through these and burn myself out, but I do want to get through them. I don't like having this list hanging over my head. That was not the intention. <laughs> so yep, we're going to try to get that done. All right. And if you don't care for the special selection stuff, you're just here for themed week. I will be back Monday as usual. And no matter what day you check me out on, I'll be back 5 PM Eastern standard time, 9 PM UTC. All right. So until you guys, uh, nope, Nope, I don't know where I was going with it. Until you guys check me out next time. Like, that doesn't make any sense. All right, so until next time, you guys stay safe out there. Keep being fantastic and have a great morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.